Hi, everyone. Then the Israel here. Thank you so much for being here during my live stream. I greatly appreciate your support. I've pre-recorded this so that we can have some of the behind the scenes done while you listen to me for just a moment. I again want to thank you so very much for being here during my live stream. If you could give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends so that they can come join us. And if you will also give me a comment in the comment section after this video is done and then definitely speak up in the chat and say hi lastly if you haven't subscribed please subscribe now if you're watching this as a replay generally if you're on a computer you can go down below and look for the little gear you can change that and make the speed faster if you're on a mobile device look up in the corner up in this area for three little dots and you can change the speed there as well those of you that are here live do definitely speak up in the chat. I greatly appreciate you being here. Well, those that are here live earn a virtual currency. Junkie Joe should be coming up here in just a moment and you'll be able to check how many bucks that you have. What are bucks? They're junk bucks. It's just a virtual point system that I have created on my account when we're live so that you can redeem those once you get to 2000 for a $10 off coupon to my shop. So you can type exclamation point bucks to see how many that you have. And if you have 2000 and you're ready for a coupon code, type exclamation point award. And my official note takers will take down that information. Now, if you haven't already created an account on my website at lindaisrael.com, please do so and then send me a message through the contact form letting me know what your YouTube username is. Why? So I'll have your email address and I can email you your coupon code. Also, if you make a donation throughout this live stream, you can be added to my YouTube donators membership that I have on my website. So again, create an account, say, hey, Linda, I donated and tell me what your username is on YouTube if it's different. That way I can get you added to that. At the end of this stream, I will have journals made and you will have the opportunity to win one of those journals. Throughout the live stream, we'll have some various raffles and we also have in-chat games. So be looking out for that in the chat and I'll kind of speak it up when I get to it. For example, if you type exclamation point raffle, right now you can be in a chance to win 200 junk bucks. So you'll be well on your way to getting 2,000 junk bucks. Normally, Robin is my official note taker. Sometimes Angelica is my official note taker. It kind of depends on what's going on. These are members and administrators of my Facebook group, the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. If you haven't joined that group, we'd love to have you come and join us over there. What else? Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly, and helpful. Hey, if you have a question, try to put it in all caps. That way I'll see it. If I don't see it, please don't be offended. The chat sometimes moves fast and I'm usually looking down trying to create things. So please ask again. But if you know the answer that someone else to someone else's question, please go ahead and answer for them. I greatly appreciate that. Let's see, what else? Oh, if you have a YouTube channel, you can't post your link, but you can say, I have a YouTube channel and tell us a little bit about it. Tell us your channel name, something like that. Tell us what you do. We're going to get started here in just a moment. I'm looking at the time. So roughly five minutes is when uh, I'll get started. So it should be just a few more seconds. So definitely hang out in the chat and we'll get started here in just a moment. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you here today. I hope you're having an amazing Thursday. Hey, by the way, have you been getting my newsletter? If not, go over to my website at lindaisrael.com. I will post the link. I guess I can post it here on YouTube as a um, 
message or content during the day and I'll post it on Facebook as well. I forgot to post it before I started the live today as a link so that if you didn't get it in your email, you could still view it and subscribe. Thank you all for being here. Do give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I thought I would show you right off the bat a sneak peek. This is going to be the next subscription box under the sea. It'll be available on May the 20... No. It'll ship May the 15th. That's what it is. It'll be available the end of April. The last Monday of April is when I will have a tutorial showing how to use it. I will also have some video showing all the contents in the kit. And this is the cover. This is one of the pages. Here's another page. And it's going to be truly all about... Hey, Tori! Uh, under the sea critters so we've got seahorses and we've got jellyfish and we've got sea lions and seals and dolphins and coral and this pattern in the background is going to be a stencil and there's a mermaid there's a couple of mermaids so oh uh, well Thanks for being here, Sandra. I hope that we can lighten your load and make you feel good. By the way, check your email. If you have contacted me, look in your spam folder. Generally, you can type Linda Israel in your search, usually in Google, I know that, and you'll find the emails from me. And make sure you mark them as safe because I have a small website. Sometimes some mail carriers kind of uh, push me to the spam folder. All right, y'all enter the raffle. I've also got the folio uh, tutorial. Not tutorial, uh, little matchbook. This is a different version of it, but it's a little matchbook type style that has a little file pockets in it that you can use. Um, that's a tutorial that's up right now. You can check out the link in the description box for the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Ah, uh, thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so, all right. You're welcome, Sandra. All right, so today I thought we would do some gel printing. I had some requests for a couple of stencils, so I've pulled those. If there's a stencil you want to see, speak up pretty soon so I can pull it. I've got three gel plates out. I've mounted one on a piece of a glass cutting mat. This is on my 12 by 12 quilters ruler. And this one, I took a piece of chipboard and covered it with uh, packing tape. And I put a little piece of tape on the back so it wouldn't slide around so much. My thoughts were sometimes we have to wait for the paint to dry before we do the next layer. So if I had more than one gel plate, I can move it and kind of be rotating around. Okay. Yay! Okay, yeah, check out that tutorial. All right, so I thought today I would start off with, let's do some rubber stamping directly on our gel plate. So I've got archival ink. My plate has a couple of what I call crusty bits on it. That's okay. I'm going to grab a couple of stamps. The first one is a large butterfly, and I can't remember if this is called Monarch, but I think if you just do search for butterfly on my website, you'll see it. This is a beeline design stamp, and what I want to do is just stamp it every so often on my gel plate. It won't hurt your gel plate to use the archival ink. You can use a permanent ink. It will come off. I like this uh, technique because it's kind of fun in making your gel prints. And remember, with Beeline Designs and My Stamps, you can scan into your computer and then use that finished scan as a physical item you cannot sell the digital version but you can print it and use it and sell that artwork all right so i've stamped the butterfly the next thing i have is i have the queen anne's lace and i've un done it from the mounting block yeah get it out and play and hey sally so glad to have you here so I've got the Queen Anne's Lace, and I'm going to ink pretty much just the top portion, and I will stamp it 
in between the butterflies. I'm not worried about perfection. So this is building up your layers kind of backwards. Now, if you don't have a gel print, basically everything I'm doing, if you could rewind the video backwards, you would do it in the reverse order. Does that make sense? You would do the stamping last on top of your mixed media page. All right, so I'm just kind of filling in where I think I want everything to be give that a moment to set up and dry i know i want some gold flecks every once in a while so i'm going to grab my spare gel plate here and i've got some gold acrylic paint it's a heavy body called master's touch i just pick it up at hobby lobby when it's on sale i've got a soft rubber brayer so I am just brayering this out just a little bit here. I've got some bubble wrap. Now, it will have some crusty bits come off. So if you don't want that, use a fresh uh, package of uh, bubble wrap. So now I'm just going to come in here and use that gel plate as if it was a stamp pad. And I need to refresh it. And I think this will be the last time I can get some out of it. All right, I think I've got, see, there's a crusty bit that came off. So I'll just remove those real fast. I see some spots I missed. I may have, the paint may be too dry now. Okay. And what's kind of cool about uh, putting this on the clear quilters block, I can kind of turn this over and see what's going on. Uh, thank you for your donation, Robin, Debbie, and Gigi. I greatly appreciate it. I do have a journal that was made in December of 2020, and it's a mixed media journal. I'll show it a little bit later. It was basically to hold the ephemera that I made, and I've taken out some of the big chunky things because it was just way too chunky. It wouldn't close. And I've added in some journal cards and little things that I've made. Yay! So glad to have everybody here today. All right, so I let that gold paint dry just a little bit. I want some texture behind there again. So I think, what do I want to scrab here? Oh, let's do this. This is called the Art Deco, Art Deco flower stencil. So I'll get it out. And kind of lay it over the top and what colors well what it's going to do is it will put colors in the background and leave that flower open so let's do let's do this teal color it's island blue so again what i'm going to do is put a little paint over here on my little gel plate and brayer, soft rubber brayer again. And just kind of brayer and lift. Kind of do it across the bottom a little bit. So if you have a small gel plate, you could just lay the stencil down and stencil in the areas that you want the paint to adhere. But if you have a big gel plate, you can just use a palette to your side. Doesn't have to be another gel plate. And just add a little bit. And I'm just kind of touching the brayer here and there. It's going to add a little bit of texture. And then over here on my little gel plate, I'm just going to brayer over the stencil. And that will remove some color. And maybe, maybe it's wet enough that if I take a book page and grab one, put it over that. Of course, it's going to have a lot of gold on it. Alrighty. 
if you're new and you're wondering what's going on, <laughs> those are games. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me. Don't worry if you don't get the hang of it right away. Just watch and comment and feel free to ask questions. Yes, the Wild and Free subscription box is still available in my shop. I have some left. Oh, I like how this turned out. So that was using the stencil in the background and brayering over it and then putting on a book page. So this would be a good little fodder to work with. All right, so I did some teal. That's still drying a little bit. We've got our clean gel plate again. Let's grab a different stencil. How about, I don't know where my big polka dots, so here's my small polka dots. And I think what we could do, so I don't want to set it down where it's really wet. Okay, this area is drier. Let's do a pink. So I've got royal fuchsia here. So I'm going to put a little bit on my gel plate. And then kind of fill in. A couple of spots. Now I have a tub of water over here to the side of me that has a little bit of thieves cleaner in it and just water. And what I do when I'm done with my stencil is I will drop it. All right, now cooperate into the water over here to the side. And then when I'm done with my session, or if I need to stop, I can quickly clean off the stencil that had paint on it so that's why I do that I don't leave mine super crusty in paint I have in the past I have some that still are covered in paint all right I think that looks pretty good all right let's do this again over here so I'm just kind of removing some of that paint off of the gel plate and then I'll pop this in here all right so that's still drying so I'm going to give that a second let's move this over here for a minute and give it a moment to dry because I think what I want to do next is put just colors on there so let's continue with the stamping idea and this time I have the large Bella Rose stamp And we're going to stamp it. And it's good to re-ink, if you can, your ink pad just before you start gel printing. And the same rules apply. The longer you leave the stamp to touch the surface, the more ink that will transfer. you got to give a little bit of pressure. And let's do right here. All right, so I put a little bit of ink on there. And I think, let's see, let's do this. I'm going to grab a sponge dauber. Here we go. And I have a little palette here. Got that. I've got some pink. So, oh, uh, it's got messy 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 bad messy 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 i try to keep my hands pretty clean of paint but sometimes it doesn't so this one is royal fuchsia hi nadine thank you for your donation so that's royal fuchsia and i've got pink rosa pink is that what it says vivid pink and let's get a little bit of white. All right, so I got a little bit of all three of these colors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a little bit of each color. And then I'm going to lightly pounce basically where the rose is. So it'll be a little bit pink. I guess what you could do is apply color like I am and then just stamp over the top of it. 
but I thought this might be kind of an interesting way all right so I'm going to clean off my dauber and I've got some green it's a really bright green so let me grab a darker green to go with it so I'm going to put a little bit of this green and this green now if you had a uh, oh come on this paint must be almost empty can't get any out of it today it seems like okay there we go well it had a paint booger that was the problem it! see what happens when paint gets old it starts to clump up all right So I'm going to grab some of this green and white and kind of go, all right, I think there's a leaf there. And let's go right there. And right there. And and actually what I think I might do is just kind of fill in lightly. Kind of gives you that a green background. All right, I may grab a little bit more pink here. A, a drier sponge works a little better, I think, so you don't put so much paint down. I'm just coming back in where I think it needs just a little bit more. All right, I'm going to let that set for a moment. Clean off my dauber. We'll see if this works. I've not done it like this in a long time, so sometimes I have to try. Hey, Tori! Welcome, welcome, welcome! here i'm glad you saw my latest video out there and i'm sorry you missed this monday we had a good time i thought i had fun we were a little long it shouldn't be blurry so but i'm going to set this aside all right so we let this set for a little while and now what i want to do is add some color to the background we used a pink and a teal earlier so now i have got a hyacin hyacin can't get it out that we'll put over here maybe a little up there i'm trying to put just very small amounts and let's do this hmm, i don't want to do that color and we just did that color okay let's do this color so this is light turquoise i want lighter colors so it's easier to see the butterfly and the flowers okay i think that's probably too much paint but we're going to try it and i'm kind of blending them together move my I'm moving rather quickly. I'm not pressing really hard because you don't want to leave marks with your brayer, but I want to really smooth out that layer of paint. And we've got a little one over here to the side, so I'm just going to grab a piece of book page and put over it. I'm using large dictionary pages today and some book pages. I need to buy some more copy paper. I'm almost out and I didn't have enough to bring it in here. <laughs> You're losing track of what I'm doing? Oh, because I'm going back and forth. I'm doing three different things. So this was the stamped with a gel on the gel print with the butterfly and the Queen Anne's lace. And then we stenciled over the back of that 
Oh, I'm liking this. It didn't get perfect, but it's okay to be grungy. You kind of see the butterfly in the background. Set that here. See if we got too much paint on here. So we got some crusty bits we left, so we'll be able to use that in the next print. I like it. So here it is after stamping. So there's rubber stamping in there. And then we did the stencils on the back a little bit. And I did some bubble wrap with the gold paint. And then I did an overall mix of color behind it. Kind of fun. You like getting the pastel color pretty paper? Yeah, it's pretty paper, Tori. I have some. I have some. All right, let's put that over here. All right, so let's get this one going with something. Here's what the side gel print looked like I'm using the little polka dot stencil. We're still waiting on this one to dry. I got a little globby here, it looks like. I don't know if I can get it off. I need a, I need a pair of tweezers or a palette knife. Here we go, I got a little palette knife. So I'm going to try to get this off. It's a little glob from... Okay. We'll leave it. I made a mess, I know. There. I did my nails yesterday, so I'm trying to keep them clean, but sometimes I get paint all over them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you like that, Sandra? So they, they were, they're nice and clean now. I washed them off, but I just did my nails yesterday. I did them myself. All right, so now let's just do some stencil layering. And this stencil was requested. So this is my circle, but what is this one called? Connected circle stencil. And we're kind of doing some different colors here. So let's do some pink. And I got way too much pink, but I'll do some pink and let's do a little bit of this lavender. Clean my. Yeah, see that paint. It's got globbies coming up in it. I need to get a new bottle, it looks like. It's just going to give me fits. I'm just removing the big globs. All right, so I want to lift, so I'm leaving the stencil down and I'm just doing a quick lift so it gets some of the paint. Doesn't have to get all of the paint. So it'll make some cool texture. All right, and then I want to lift this guy off and there's a little bit of paint left around. So I'm going to clean off my stencil here. And let's see. Oh, I lost my towel. I'm going to let that dry for a moment. Let's pick up our roses. It's not completely dry yet, but I think it's enough dry that I can add just a little bit of white. Again, another paint booger. Oh, stop doing that to me. I guess I haven't gel printed in a while, so my paint is saying, you need to use me more often. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to grab my grayer. I may have enough. I don't know. We'll see.
Let's see. Grab the book page for over there. And I had some smaller book pages for the smaller gel plate. Okay. Listen to your paint. Exactly. Your foot. Bonnie, put your, or not Bonnie, who was saying that? Sam, Sam, I saw Bonnie's name. Sam, put your glasses on, woman. <laughs> no one else has said it's uh, blurry. You, are you having bad internet connectivity, possibly? That could happen. All right, so this was just putting paint on my gel plate to the side. We can use those for picking up stuff later. All right. Ooh. All right, so there is printing with rubber stamping the bros first and then just kind of daubing the paint behind it. It could be crisper. It could be better, but I think it looks pretty good. Remember when you stamp, it will be the reverse image if you had gone direct to paper. But I like it. I think that turned out pretty cool doing it that way. Another way we could do it is, again, as what I said, was you could put daubs of paint down in the areas that you think you're going to put your stamp and then stamp over the top of it. Had to refresh. It's better now. Yeah, it's probably an internet issue on, on y'all's part. It's not my fault. <laughs> you like it? Okay. So, since I've got this one out. All right, so I'm going to do something a little bit different than what I've done previously. I will put down a little bit of some paint. I can get the lid open. So we're going to have some teal. And I've got kind of a... a fuchsia color. All right, let me shake it. I may need to add water to them when I'm done gel printing. Not right now. Put on my towel. All right, so I want to kind of just get some color. A little bit of color there. All right, so I'm going to lay down. This is the Romantic Flourish Stencil. So Romantic Flourish Stencil. Try not to get everything in my... Come on now. Cooperate. And what I want to do now is while that stencil's down, is run my brayer over the stencil. Ah, I didn't mean for that. I caught my fingernail on it. Dang it. See if I can get it back where it was. All right, let's see if we can. I may not be able to salvage it. All right. Just for grins, let's see if I have one. Didn't really. So that is picking up through the gel plate onto another gel print. And then let's lift the stencil. And we've got a real faint design in the background there of the paint that was left behind under the stencil. So we're gonna come back. Maybe y'all don't like doing this way. I don't know, I was trying to figure out ways that I could show y'all the different stencil patterns and stamping. And uh, I thought the different gel plates would help. All right, so now I've got from the March 2022 Artistic Stencil Club, this is this flowers. All right, so I want to lay it this way and I'll get this teal color. All right, put a little bit over here on my small gel plate as a palette. And then I'll lift it. OK. 
Okay. And I'll pop that into my water. I didn't go all the way up, I know, but I'm basically going to be printing down here for the most part. So let's get, oh, let's do this one. This is my, it's a newer stencil, and I called it butterflies or dragonflies or moths even, I guess. So it kind of depends on what you want it to be. These are almost dry, so... I'm going to start up here. It's a piece of string. No strings. No strings attached, my dear. Let's go up here. And we did this teal color. So let's do... Let's do a darker blue. Or this darker teal. So this is a heavy body acrylic. So I'll put just a little bit on my palette again. grab my oops now all right let's go over here I'm in my own little world right now, so if you're talking to me, I don't hear you. <laughs> it's like, ooh, let's put this here. Ooh, let's put that there. All right, let's put one up here. Okay, I think we're getting there. All right. Romantic Flourish. The polka dot stencil is called Small Polka Dots. Small Polka Dots. All right. So what else can we put on here? You know, I think we could get away with putting a stamped pattern in the background. So I've got the three leaves stamp and what i want to do is stamp in between and this will faintly show up in the background okay so i'm just kind of going around i am going to clean off my stamp if it was stamped on some wet paint so I'll just kind of wipe it off. I've got a towel here. Move my little gel plate over for a second. I don't know, I'm having fun just kind of adding a little bit of texture. I'm just going ahead and stamping on my little mini gel plate down the side. Might as well. Okay, this blue paint is still pretty wet. So I think what I want, I need to find, I have a small brayer somewhere. But I don't see it at the moment. I just stuck my fingers in wet paint. Oh, I have the romantic squirrel too. I forgot about that. Alright, give me a second to... I was trying to decide if I wanted to find this other brayer. I've moved a bunch of stuff. All right, so I think now what I want to do is I want a little bit of green. So I'm going to put it 
on my paper palette over here. Oh, I've got to get some more paint. Ugh, it just splattered everywhere. Let's add a little green, darker green. All right, so I've got both of these on my little palette here. And I've got a little two inch brayer. So I'm just going to run that. Kind of making little hash marks. Not doing the whole thing, just where the leaves are. Alright, just kind of smoothing those out just a little bit. Alright, I'll clean off my brayer by going over the green side. So I went over the green side here. Clean my brayer off. And I think now let's go back to the romantic flourish. Let that dry. So here's the romantic flourish stencil. So this stencil. And I need some lotion on my hands because they get dry. So that's kind of a pale blue and a pale pink on there. And I think that we could probably get away with just doing white behind it. Just to see. Oh, that was way too much paint. <laughs> oh. Put it over here. This is still kind of wet over here, but. got too much paint on my plate. All right, I'm just going to clean off my prayer. We're going to see if this works. Oh, thank you, Rhonda, for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! Attack of the file folder. I'm trying a different way of you putting my stencils while I'm doing the live stream. So I'm still making changes. I'm always making changes. It seems like. All right. Did I miss any questions? Y'all can enter the raffle here in a moment. We'll uh, pick the winner of 200 junk bucks. Hopefully there's not too much paint. We may get a real faint. Oh no, that worked. Yay. So there's the romantic flourish in a gel print. I showed you. Where'd it go? Here, this one. So here it is on a pink using the same colors here. And then this is putting white behind it. It's kind of cool, huh? Connected boxes. Yeah, I've got that one here. Connected boxes stencil. Yep, that's coming up. New stencils. We'll do it uh, going off the page on this one. All right, so this I want to leave the stencil down and let's put some paint over it. So I've got a hyacinth, so a lighter color, because it's going to fill in where the stencil has an opening. And I've got a light turquoise. And I got paint all over my hand again. All right, so that's filling in where the blocks are and I think I want to do some texture so I'm going to grab 
Henry saves bubble wrap for me. I just have to sometimes cut it. Oh, that's the wrong pair of scissors, Linda. Do smaller pieces. I don't need a great big piece. All right, so I got me a little piece there. I'm usually prepared. All right, so I'm just removing the paint rather aggressively. So what it'll do is there'll be texture in the stencil, the boxes. So I'll remove this and let that dry for a moment. All right, then over here on my little gel plate, this is where I was cleaning off my brayer. And that, that's some interesting texture and color, isn't it? It's got a little wet, so I'm going to brayer over it real fast. Smooth that out. All right, so this guy, he might be dry enough to put the next color on. And since we did lighter colors underneath, you can always kind of check if you mount it on a clear. So this is kind of a tealy color, tealy blue. Let's get a darker color. I've got this lake blue that I'll put on the back side. Try not to put too much paint. Fill it in, fill it in, brayer it out really thin. Hey, that was pretty good. It rhymed. <laughs> All right, let's put paper on this one. And let's add some texture to this one over here. So I've got a large spool and a small spool from thread. I just threw it around. I don't know if y'all could see that. It's a little dark in here. Come on, now. I think I need to put something white in front of me more. All right, poke, poke, nudge, nudge. Y'all enter the raffle if you haven't already. give you a moment to get in. All right, let's see how this looks for the big reveal. Ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. What do you think? That's using the connected boxes. Jelly plate. Saving your pennies to get jelly plates. Yeah. Janice, did you get your emails from me? I want to make sure you got everything. I think you were wanting a coupon code and I got it for you. You like it? I like how that one turned out. All right, so we still got a little smooch the paint up there. What time is it? So let's go ahead and I'll put this gel plate away. Is there another stencil? I did the small, the circle. I did the connected squares. Oh, do y'all want to make something? Oh, I know what I was going to do. All right, we're going to do that first. I've got some fabric back here, and I think I want to gel print on it. So I'm going to slide this over here and look at it. That's the heavy body paint. And I'll get the link for the freezer paper I used. Okay, Janice, yay! Yeah, music notes. See, I, I don't have that one here. I don't have the music sheet one here. I thought I had one at the house and I don't have one. I had one at a workshop I did and I sold it that day and I forgot to ask Henry to cut one for I could have it as an example. So this is white 
cotton fabric. I have ironed it to the shiny side of freezer paper so that it has a little bit of body. It's not near as flimsy as actual fabric by itself. And I thought what I would do is gel print on top of this guy. I want to do one more thing. I got that texture out, but I think I want to put this which is, uh, I think this is called Funky Grid. I'm basically lifting some of the paint. And it may not come out exactly the way I wanted it. I probably should have just left it. But I thought it might be kind of cool. Let's get a purple. Let's do this like this purple. Oh, I got a crusty bit. All right. Okay, so I have this piece of fabric. So I'm trying to make sure I put it fabric side down. Get some stuff out of the way and put it right there. The freezer paper is only there to give the fabric a little more body. If you want, you can um, starch some fabric to make it stiff. You could take a piece and wrap it by taping it to a piece of chipboard because you know you want to gel print it and leave it to the side and then you can undo the tape and have your fabric all right let's see we got to rub it really good make sure it adheres well oh that's cool just some texture got some of the grungy bits on the side that turned out pretty cute. I like it. Okay. This guy is almost dry. I'm going to leave it because I think I'm going to use that to do a gel print on fabric in a moment. So let's put some more paint on this guy. And what other stencil? Did I miss them all? Sorry, I didn't have the music notes out. I was going to use it and I couldn't find it. All right, so let's do this guy. All right, so this is called Flowering Vines, and then I'm also going to use, where is it? No, I don't want to use that one. Uh, let's use the Small Diamonds. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Small Diamonds. Put this back up here. All right, I'm just going to lay this over the whole plate. This will be in the foreground. So I haven't done this. Let's do some gold. I think that would look really pretty in gold paint. There's a little bit of paint on the brayer, but that's okay. I think it kind of helps tone down that gold. It'll be a faint pattern. I'm just using what's left of the paint on my bigger palette over here. I need an assistant to empty my water. All right, let's do the raffle. Y'all entered the raffle now. Okay, I know I saw another one. Yeah. Okay. Giveaway. And our first winner of the day who wins 200 junk bucks is... Debbie, Debbie, you won some junk butts. So you can get some digital downloads or use them towards your uh, physical purchase next time. 
All right, so we're going to do this little package of bird note cards with envelopes. These were given to me, and I thought, well, it's springtime. These would be kind of fun. You could cut the fronts off, put them on a larger piece. You could cut these apart and use the birds independently. You could use them as they are. All right, so we put a little bit of the uh, vining uh, flowers and vines, I think is what I called it, flowers and vines. And we've got a little bit of a gold in there. So let's do a I'm going to do a heavy body this time. This is called Viridian. And I want to brayer over this. I just did the whole thing. And so over here, I think I'm just going to do really light. Cleaning off my brayer. Pop the stencil in here. All right, so we did a light, two light coats of colors. So now let's do this lake blue behind here. Let's see how this turns out. Hopefully I didn't take off too much paint. I'm going to get the other half of my fabric and print it. Oh, thank you, Janice, for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. I got distracted. I was looking at the paint on my finger now. All right, you ready? Oh, this turned out cool too. So it has that iridescent gold in it. And then with the blues behind it, you can barely see the diamonds. You may not be able to see them at all, but I think those will be fun fabrics to use. I thought I would print some because I wanted to use them in... Uh, a journal I want to make. Journal cover, that is. All right, so let's put this guy here. All right, so since those didn't show up very well on that fabric, right? So we know that this gold is going to be there, and the teal barely shows up with the blue that I put behind it. But what if I did a pink or a purple? So let's see. White magenta. Or I have rouge. Hmm. I think I want to do the darker purple. Oh, we got a crusty bit again. Got to Linda's got to do more gel printing. And this paint's really thick. Okay, so what we're going to do is finish gel printing the big one behind me. And let's make something. There's a lot of paint on there, so I'm going to try to remove a little bit of it. Oh, yeah, there was one other technique I was going to show you today, too. All right. Oh, I wanted to do it on fabric. Is this one big enough? This one is big enough.
I like that color, that purple. It's the rhythmic moose smoothing of the paper. <laughs> it didn't get all of it because I didn't have the right coverage of paint, but that's kind of a cool print. I still use it. It's still usable. I'm going to set this aside. I want to do one more quick technique. This is going to be using a medium blue and a light turquoise type blue. Get my scrap of paper ready. All right, so now I'm going to come in here. It's got a little bit of purple on my brayer but that's okay now i've got a card that i have cut with some decorative edge scissors and i'm just going to drag this through both ways okay and i'm gonna let that set and dry so i wanted to do that so we could do this one all right so this guy has pinks and greens and teals i think probably just coming back with a white would be best and let's lift this print and maybe even we'll use some uh, fabric again so i'm gonna try to move a few things out of the way mm. trying to get good coverage over the whole gel plate so we don't have crusty bits that stay behind too much all right move this out of the way because i've got a big piece of fabric because i didn't cut them down All right, so I've got a piece of fabric that has been ironed to freezer paper. I'm just gonna line it up best I can. Apparently this one was smaller. I cut some right at first, not thinking about how big I wanted it because it was the beginning of the roll of the paper and it was kind of messed up. So. I cut that piece off. I tried to use it anyway. <laughs> Let's hope that we got enough paint. And since this will be 12 by 12, it's almost big enough. Well, it is big enough if you don't have a wrap. But if you just want to do a simple journal cover. Well, it didn't come up completely. But this might be a good print to layer other things like i could cut up squares to fill in where it didn't print and i think if i had more paint on my palette it would have lifted so we're gonna set that there since we still have some pattern on here let me grab the circle stencil again i think that's what i want to do so i gotta find it in the water there it is so I'm just, I took it out of the water and I'm going to dry it off. Okay, that's pretty dry. And let's turn it this way. And we're going to get texture in the paint that's left behind too, which is kind of cool. So let's do this. I want, I want a darker color, I think. So I'm going to do this darker medium blue.
just building some layers here. It's really faint on there. And I think I'm going to get out the grid. Yep, grid. I'm just cleaning it off. Some of these I need to have duplicates of. All right, we'll let that dry for a moment and grab a different stencil. Ooh, here's, I like this one. This is called Funky Little Boxes Stencil. Funky Little Boxes Stencil. I like this one. It's a lot of fun. So let's put that down. And I'm going to do some gold this time. Just kind of adding a few here and there. Ooh, it's getting all this grungy texture on it. See if the grid is dry enough, and let's add let's add a little bit of green in the background here. It gets lighter as we get out to the edges. Okay, I think I've got it to a point that we're ready to pull it. I think, I think, I think. I almost feel like I want to put one more color on there, but I think I do. I want to go one more color. And let's go, I used a dark blue earlier. I've got rouge again. I know this may seem kind of clashy, but let's see what happens. I know it's a little wet. I don't know if I have enough paint. I may want just a little bit more. All right, let's see what happens. I'm just in my little zone. All right. Oh, this is my thin one. I knew that one was thin. Let's go. Stay. All right. It's big. Okay. I probably waited too long fessing with the fabric. We'll see what happens. I'm having fun. I'm trying some things that I haven't done in a while and finding that I need to use my paint up because it's getting old. This is real grungy looking. You see all the grunge in there? This would be good for a foundation that I could gel print on top of. In fact, what I may do is see if I can get some of this off. No. 
it's pretty stuck on there. But what if we did some stenciling in gold? Oh yeah. I've got the quilted starburst. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay it on my gel plate. I'm gonna put some gold paint on it in a couple of spots and apparently on my fingers too. Man, this is one of those days I just keep squeezing the paint out. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna brayer this on. Try to be quick about it. And I want to line this up over here. And then we're gonna come down here have enough paint. Let's go one more time. Right here. Most of my patterns repeat so you can do this. I don't think that paint is going to be wet enough but I'm going to try it anyway to line it up. I think I went too far but that's okay. Maybe if I put some open medium with it. Well, it still turned out cool because we've got the faint starbursts on here. How's that? So we we used it. We did something with it. All right, so let's uh, finish with this guy. Now I've got a good foundation started for the next gel printing session. All right, so here I did that weave on there. And I think we did a dark blue and a teal. So let's use this lighter teal on the back. Come on, don't be falling in there. Y'all still with me? All right. Gold goes with everything. I agree. It's neutral. Some people try to say you can't wear gold and silver together, but it's a neutral color, and yes, you can. Oh, I'm just keeping, I'm um, lifting up my paint. So I'm just going to get a good book page here. Okay. Love it. Thank you. So it's kind of a faux burlap texture pattern. And that was using a gift card that I had used some decorative scissors. This is the like postage type and then I went like this, on this gift card. I thought that turned out pretty cute. Okay, so let's put the gel plate aside. I'm gonna clean my hands off just a little bit. Let's make something. Of course, now I've rearranged again, so let's see what we can do here. Ah, I've got an idea. All right, so I've got some painted paper that's laid right here where I cleaned off my brayer. I'm just drying it because it was wet. I've got the large butterfly here that I've had earlier and I want to stamp it over. Kind of like that. All right, I'm going to do it again. See if I can get more than if I had done it right, I could have got more out of it. Maybe get one more right here. All right, so we've got a butterfly. Let's cut it out. Cut it out, man. 
just cut one of them out. It's still wet, so I'm going to set it aside for a minute for it to dry. And I think, wouldn't that look good on top of there? I'm going to clean my hands again. I think what I want is some 5x7 paper. Let's see if I have... This is a like a supposed to be a book, but the problem was it uh, was too thick of paper. All right, so let's do this. Let's tear it. Just kind of tearing the edge just a little bit. It's stuck. All right, so if I tear this, okay, let's come over just a smidge, and then that's going to fit on the front here. So if we go down to right about there. So we'll use that as a background. How's that? I've got a piece of this purple, and I think we need to tear a little strip of it. Always works better if you have more paper to hang on to when you're tearing. I want to tear the other side too. All right, I should have done this differently. Just kind of building a little bit of layers. Again, this was just gel printed papers laying here. I'm just loosely going to cut this one out. Making stuff. You like stuff? So you can use the clean off. Or when you clean off your brayer, I just use a stack of book pages beside me and I'll run my brayer off onto it and that comes fodder that can be used in your junk journals and then you end up with all these printed papers that could be junk mail, it could be old books, could be newspaper print, whatever you can get your hands on. My card's not staying down but all right, I think it needs something else behind the actual butterfly, don't you think? So, let's look here. How about, kind of got this color. I kind of like that. And I kind of like this square look that we've got going on behind here. So, I'm going to cut it out. And I'm, I'm doing it jaggedy because I messed up. And I thought, why not? <laughs> Alright, so we had this guy going down here. And this guy, do we want him in the middle or more at the top? I'm kind of liking that. Oh, I know what else I want. Let's get out the... Queen Anne's Lace. And maybe we'll stamp it below. All right. So, I'm going to get a scrap of paper here. Of course, when I want one, I can't find the one that I've been using. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get this guy, and we're going to take and stamp this Queen Anne's Lace at different heights going across the page here. So it just gives a little faint texture in the background. 
So now when we put this down, I think we're getting there a little at a time. Let's add some distress inks. When I find my ink pad, there it is. And we'll glue down this bottom piece. All right, is everybody still with me? Have I lost you yet? We're using one of the gel prints. And then we're using where I mopped up my brayer to the side. Let's go ahead and do this one while we're at it. I may need to re-ink. I go through a lot of this. Wait, did I just get a message? Okay. All right, so if we put this down here, let's go ahead and glue this one down just so it's wrangled. And it'll give me an opportunity to kind of look at it to see what else do I need to do. I think what I need to do is grab the shabby stitches or the stitches set. I finally broke down and ordered a new bone folder, y'all. <laughs> I've been without my bone folder for several months now, and I like using it. I know that as soon as it arrives, I will probably get another, or find my old one. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. <laughs> All right, so we're using the gel print. I think I need to put some more pattern on this pink colored one. So maybe I should stamp on top of it. I've got this leafy branch, so let's do that. Get my little... It'll help if I ink my stamp up. Kind of given a pretty little backdrop to our butterfly. Okay. See how we're building it up here? I kind of like that. I still think I need this vertical piece. Let's tear this. We don't want it too perfect, right? All right, so let me get the shabby stitches and we'll stitch around this outside edge. <laughs> of course, now that I want it, I can't find it right away. I just had it. All right, I changed my mind. I'm going to use the uh, Lace Duo. I knew where it was. <laughs> All right, so we're going to use the Lace Duo. And we're going to stamp it across the top here. Across the bottom, and then we're going to do in the middle here. I think that's what it needed. Now we could, I don't have my sewing machine set up, but we could stitch around the outside edge, and the shabby stitches on top of that would also look good, I think. So, if I put this down here, 
I'll glue it into place. Kind of like that. I'm trying to decide if there's anything else I want to put down. I think I want to keep it relatively flat, but let's get a little piece of cheesecloth to see what it looks like. I know, cheesecloth. Really, Linda? Yes, cheesecloth. We may have to spray it, but I don't know. That doesn't really go, does it? I was thinking fabric. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll do a word with fabric under it, and maybe we'll go in and color the butterfly just a little bit. Okay, somebody's in the admin chat. I'm trying to, I'm like, what do y'all do to the admin chat? You're supposed to be here hanging out with me. <laughs> so I'm going to glue this right here. And then we'll put this on the back. I'm spending more time than I might sometimes to create, but sometimes it's just the creative process of doing things. And I think what I want to do is add some color to this. So I'm grabbing a blue. This is a Stedler Art watercolor pencil. All right, let's see if I can find a turquoise. No, I don't want turquoise. I want a green. I'm just kind of adding a little bit more color to it. Didn't that make a big difference right there? Just kind of adding some more dark. It could use a little bit more. Where is this one? That's a indigo. I'm just putting it on indigo. It's a really dark blue. And I've added Robin to the spreadsheet, the links. People were asking about my paintbrush and about the um, colored pencils. And so I've put those up there. I kind of like that. And let's put a word down here. Do I have some? I thought I had some already laying here. Let's see if any of these are worthy. We have collect beautiful moments. So we had a little piece of fabric to put behind that. I dyed some fabric the other day. Do we want to do... Do we want to do this shade of teal? Probably. Or do we want to do the purple? I think maybe the purple. I think maybe, maybe the purple. Let's get my fabric scissors. I don't think I need it that big. I might layer the purple and teal together. Let's do that. So I want just slightly bigger. but I don't want it as wide. And then if we put this on top, how's that? All right, so now I'm going to glue 
down the middle. Uh, make sure that you check out my tutorial video that shared today for the little matchbook folio. That's a challenge in April inside my Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. The link to the group is below in the description box here today, but Robin will also share it in the chat. Okay, I kind of like that. Very mixed media. And yes, I'm using Aline's Tacky Glue to glue down fabric. Okay. Don't put it upside down. I could sit here and fudge some more with the butterfly. I think I know what else I need is I need the uh, really dark indigo. Where's this one? All right. I'm going to go around this outside edge. I feel like it needs a little bit more definition. All right. So let's just kind of. There we go. Uh, thank you so much for your donation, Eric. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bats Need Friends, which is t uh, Tori or Tony? Tony. Tori. And then Janice and Rhonda and Nadine and Gigi's Attic, Art Attic, and Robin and Debbie. Thank you all for your donations today. Okay, I kind of like it. What do you think? I was using a gel print today. All right, so let's grab something else that we worked with today. I kind of liked how this one turned out too today with the different things on here. I don't know. I liked it. Should we make another giant journal card? I know y'all want probably to make little things, but uh, this kind of makes it kind of fun. You're always gluing the wrong way. I, it happens to me all the time. All right, let's see what this is a six by six. I really like to use all of that gel print. So how about we just find a, uh, I'm trying to figure out what I want to put it on. You know what? I'm going to cut it. Okay, so I'll make it about four and a half inches by six and a half inches. So it gives us a nice little size to work with and six and a half. So let me just grab, I've got a purple cardstock. I think this is the last one I have. I think that purple as a card base would look pretty good. So let's go seven inches. And it doesn't always have to be folded, but I'm going to do another one five by seven by ten. I'm going to fold this in half best as you can. Okay, that's going to go there. I've got, and I didn't use it today, this is the dandelions. And I think that would look really good stamped on top. So let's add some distress inks. And I didn't even add distress inks to the outside edge of the last card. Okay. You like it for the large journal cards, great for tuck pages. 
Okay, kind of like that. And I think I want to stamp it where it's going to be right here in this quadrant. So I really want to ink it up. I'm going to rotate this so I can see it a little better. Okay, let's see how that turns out. Bye! See you later, Julie! Thanks for stopping in! Okay. There's the dandelions. So if we put that on here, I think we could back this with one more piece. And I want to get just a plain book page and cut it just slightly uh, bigger. Because what I'm going to do is just paint the edge. So seven, so six and three quarters. And that was four, so we need a five, four and three quarters. I want a border around that outside edge, and I don't know that I want white, but maybe if we did a bright teal, so let me grab a scrap of paper here. And if I had already done this earlier, I could have just used a brayered piece that I had in my stash. But what I'm going to do is just brayer around the outside edge. So if you don't have the color of paper you want in a layer, well, paint it. Okay? I'm going to heat it up to dry it. Bye, Tori. Have a good day. I'm going to get a drink of water. I wish I knew what I did with my shabby stitches. I know they're here somewhere. We'll grab a different border stamp. So see how that... changes the look. Oh, uh, thank you, Robin, for your donation. All right, I'm going to glue these together real quick. I will do a project, not today, with the fabric. I plan to do a sole tutorial of piecing together the fabric to make a wrap journal. So I wanted to print a couple of pieces so that I could use them with some printed fabric to make my little collage together scrappy looking cover. So be on the lookout for that. I did have another tutorial that I recorded yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I forgot what day it was. I got to edit and got the tutorial today, this morning that posted on making the matchbook folio. If you haven't checked out my newsletter, please do so. I like how this turned out. Do you like that? Can you see it? Is it? And this was the other one we made. All right, so maybe a sentiment on top of there, or do we need to leave it like it is? I was looking at this Collect Beautiful Moments, and I've got my Mermaid Lagoon. And I'm sure it has just a little bit of ink on it. 
So that's toned down that white just a little bit. We're almost to the goal. You love them both. Well, thank you, Teresa. So do we want to add text to this one? Possibly. And get the a border stamp out. Maybe, maybe this one. I'm trying to decide what saying I want to use. Maybe we'll get one out of here. Still don't know what I did with that. Okay, so if we do this around the outside edge and we need a word, so that's going to go around the outside edge there. What word should we do? I have. Oh, how about magical? And maybe we need to find a dragonfly stamp. All right, let's stamp this. This is the twining ribbon stamp. I think, yeah, it barely fits, so it'll just kind of put it in the middle. Oh, overlap it. Oh, let's just overlap it. So I'm making it go off the page a little bit, and then we're just going to line it up as best we can. Well, that doesn't look too bad. You can't hardly tell. Thank you, Nadine, for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I like it. Okay. Should we get a, a dragonfly? Or maybe we should get the other butterfly we had a minute ago. And put that on there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's cut one out and see if we like it. I'm just off in my own world, fussy cutting, butterflies. Y'all got plans for your weekend? I think I'm just going to get some things ready for Monday. I've got some orders to work on. Now that I think the laser is finally fixed so I can get out rubber stamp orders and stencil orders. What else? Um prepping for Monday. I'm going to mix up a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of the, um, well, maybe I don't want that because she's too big, but could go down there. The Amarillo Rose with the Apothecary Kit. And that was kind of reason why I wanted to do some botanical fun. This is a little bit darker than either of those kits. So I thought it'd be fun to have some different mixed media in with it. I don't know, I kind of like that subtleness. Let's add a little bit of some darker blues to it. So I'm just scribbling on some watercolor pencil. Ah, got away from me. I don't know, kind of, 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 maybe, just maybe, 
All right, I'm going to glue it down. You know, I think about it, trying to decide what I want to do, and then I think too long, and I'm like, just do it. Just put it down already. Quit thinking about it. All right, so now I'm just going to come in with black. I'm just going around it, making little scribbles. And then I'll use my water brush again that I just put back in the thing. I think. Oh no, it's laying here on the desk right in front of me. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. I think that kind of helps bring that butterfly out, doesn't it? Framing that with the black. All right, I think that's better. All right, and then if we do, I was going to do magical, but I think we still could. We did it on a little piece of paper. Yeah. Expect great things. Let's do that one. See if I had a little piece of a book page here left. Got a little bit of color still on my bright uh, brush, and I'm just going to come in here. And add some distress inks to it. Purple cloth, okay. I could do purple since the background is purple. So let's get that piece of purple. I think it needs to be smaller. How's that? Good to go. Purple. We did the purple. You like the purple? We could use the cheesecloth. Let's get a little bitty piece. We'll have it where it comes out down the bottom. Just kind of putting it where it's coming out the bottom. Uh, okay. There we go. Now it's ruined. Ugh. <laughs> Isn't that kind of cool? The different textures in there. So creating your own background. This would be a beautiful journal cover as well, I think. I like the way this one turned out. Pretty, huh? All right, so what are we going to do? You want me to do one more? There's the two I've made so far. Put this in my water. Throw things on the floor. At the top? You think it needs something at the top? No, I think it needs... I think this is what I want. I want the eyes to be drawn down to here because I like the pattern that's at the top. So I say no. 
just a tiny thing. The only thing I would put maybe is a bling right in the center of that. So just a little bling. I could put one more in here. So right about there. So it's kind of pointing out where the flowers intersect. And it's not much, but it's a little something. Denied! <laughs> so rude! And I just thought of something that could go on this butterfly. I'm just cutting a few loose here. All right, let's put it right down the middle. There we go. We add some bling. You see the bling? Okay, I like that. <laughs> the bling. Okay, the bling was great. Good. Yay! The bling was great. What if we made another one? We gotta make a, a series, right? I gotta make a trio. Since I stamped it three times. Same butterfly, three different ways. This will be good. I like it. Let's see if I can find a blue piece of paper, maybe. So we put that on there. All right, let's cut this one down. That was cleaning my brayer off onto a stencil earlier. Okay. Is that what I want? What did I do? Four and three quarters. Six and three four. No. Yeah. I think that makes it pretty big to go on the front. So I just need one card. Maybe this color, with that on top of it. I'm trying to use up some of this paper that I have because I don't go to it because I only have a few sheets left or something. And so I would rather start making my own paper backgrounds in a sense by dyeing it. But you know, I don't always have time for that. All right. You love the bling body on the butterfly? Yay! I added bling. Are you happy now? I can't get it lined up. So if you don't have this color cardstock, well, you can dye paper. You can paint it. All right. I'm just going to add some distress inks to the butterfly and to the gel print page. Thank you for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll finish this one and I'll show you the journal that I have. And remember, if you make a donation to go over to my website at lindaisrael.com and create a user account and say, hey, I donated on YouTube and I'll get you added to the YouTube donator membership. All right, so this time, this time, I think I want to stamp 
Bella Rose in the background over and over. Over and over again. So we'll stamp it. Rotate and stamp it. So adding stamping with it. A gel print. So if we did that on here, and then we have this butterfly, what else do we need? I think I'll go ahead and glue down the big piece. We could do that same ribbon border around it. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope that you're inspired to create. Try to get it somewhat straight. Yeah, I think I think stamping it. Stamp the edges. Don't stamp on my butterfly. I think it looks pretty good with the border on there. Okay, I got it right side up. This guy's going to go up here, but I think he needs some color added to him. So this time I've got a purple. <laughs> kind of adding a little bit of purple there. Come back with my water brush. Kind of pulling that purple out. Looking good, I think. I think we need something else. So maybe this time we just do a piece of cheesecloth. Maybe we'll spray it with some tattered angels. I think that's too big. I think it needs to be a dark blue. So I'm just going to pop it into my spray box here. I've got uh, sapphire blue. And let's dry it. My nose itches. All right. We need to do the raffle for the little note cards, little birdie note cards. I think that's what it needed. I think that's what it needed. Let's put some glue down. Lay this on top of it, and then we'll put glue on this guy. It's still a little damp, so I gotta be careful. Since I'm using book pages, these papers are really thin, so you're not adding a lot of bulk to the card if you were using all cardstock layers.
Okay, I like that. And I think it needs some bling going down the middle of it, back of it, whatever. Let's see if I can get this one off. Got some bling. All right, and what do we need? This time we could do magical on here and let's do it on I've got a nice piece of kind of eye off white trying to get a ink block or stamp block not an ink block I gotta get the ink pad all right let's stamp that somewhat in the middle I'm going to use some blues. I can find the other. Where is it? Well, I'll use this one. Okay. So I'll do a little bit of the Mermaid Lagoon. And I've got a little bit of Blueprint Sketch. Just so it's not white. I don't like it. It needs something else. I have. Is that big enough? No. But maybe what we can do if we add some color to the edge. could also have used distress inks on the edges of this, but I thought I would try the watercolor pencil. Kind of pushing it in. Need something else. <laughs> or it needs to not be on there. I think maybe we don't put it on there. <laughs> I guess if I put it all the way down in the bottom corner. All right. Y'all have to tell me if you like it. I think it may be okay now if I look at it. Alrighty, I'm going to clear a couple things off. You can tell me if that's it. You like it? Well, I'll show off the journal that I have. And I'll show you some of the gel prints that I made. Okay. I think I'm just going to glue it down. Oh yeah, make sure that you share your project. Okay, Robin likes it. Somebody spoke up finally. <laughs> okay. It just wasn't looking right at first to me, but that happens. It's okay. Try to put a few things out of the way for a moment. So here's the three cards. So if I put them in order of the way that I made them that I use gel prints, get it in the shot so you can see it. I'll take some still photos of these and share them on my social media. Okay, so 
Ah! I got a mess going on. These are some of the... I was cleaning up my gel plate. Here's one that we made today. That's the boxed squares. Connected boxes? Connected boxes. That's the Romantic Flourish stencil. There it is again. This was stamping on the gel plate first, putting paint behind it with a sponge dauber, and then printing. Just a mop up. This is the circles, connected circle stencils. This was the butterflies and some gold and the uh, Art Deco stencil in the background. I was playing with how that came together. Some more butterflies. This time I had a lot of gold paint on the plate first, and then I stamped behind it. So everything has a gold shimmer to it. Ah, oh, thank you, Teresa. Here is, again, the Romantic Flourish. I did it before we started printing today live. And this one was stamping and then cleaning up the gel plate a little bit. Some stamping and stencils. This was using a different, or the, this was the same card idea uh, with the texture. And here's where I had a bigger one that I used. This was a gel print from early on. Cleaning up my brayer and stamping and removing paint. Stencil. All right, let me show you the fabric real fast. And then what we're going to do is I'll give away the prize. All right, so this was one gel print that it didn't come out very dark, but what I may do is print again, like in these areas that didn't get a lot. And then this one I thought turned out pretty cool. It was two layers. The first layer, it was kind of meh. It was just color, but I came back with the gold and put that on top. And then this one was done on my smaller gel plate and it's got a little bit of some gold vines. It's again, not super strong, but I could either gel print again on it or stamp over the top of that. I think these turned out to be the best ones in the fabric today. I liked the gold, how that came through with that teal in the background and this purple and the blues. All right, so let's, um, Let's pick a winner of the note cards. Okay. Roses are your favorite. Yeah, the roses. All right, so let's pick a winner for the note cards, these little birdie note cards. And the winner is Connie Barch. Congratulations, Connie. All right, so we're going to get rid of that and go here and go like this. All right, and I believe we had enough donators to give away the journal today. So if you donated, that would be Sandra, Nadine, Janice, Robin, Eric, Bats Need Friends, which is Tori, Janice, Rhonda, Nadine, again, thank you, Gigi's Art Attic, Robin again, and Debbie Zagaret. So this was a journal that I made in 2020 for the... Friendly junk journal people, we did 12 days of junk journal gift ideas. And so the cover is some mixed media pages that I put together. I have a tutorial on how I made the cover, uh, how I made the journal, actually. And it's over some really thick chipboard, I think. I can't remember. And then it has this element on the front where I did the ruffles of the fabric. And I took out some of the really bulky things and put in something smaller, like this is a mixed media card. This is a digital print in the background. And then this was a mop-up page where I was cleaning off my brayer, and that was a uh, gel print. It's a little fabric tag here. Um, this was one of the projects that we did. So I painted some paper. So you have a piece of painted book page that you can write upon. And you had some notebook paper. And then this was decorated on the other side. Do it either way in your journal here. Some Franken page behind. Okay, why aren't you wanting to go through there? There we go. 
Um, this was a tutorial as well. Use that same sunflower or dandelion stamp. And then there's a journal card inside. And that goes back here in this pocket. And another little journal card with some stitching. These pages are relatively plain because I was just decorating it for the, sh the purpose of having the ephemera in it mainly. So now you can come in and decorate it a little bit more. This is what I posted on Instagram and my Facebook page about using the butterfly collection stamp stamp it color it i scanned it in and then i made different hues out of it and printed it and so i just used those prints and made these journals this was from the journal quartet 2 stencil or stamp set book page in the background and then this is 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that i've cut in half and i scored at four and a half inches from one side and three inches from the other and then folded it and now I have this little folio to add more journaling space and it's text weight or scrapbook paper so it's not super thick it's a journal card did some mixed media backgrounds little envelope I think it has a little faux postage from calico collage in it fabric on here this was just some tear off notepad paper and I made these a while back these were the Tim Holtz little um, label pieces and I put some scrapbook paper in the background just put this all together if I can get it in there now so you got a little sub pocket oh and you can write on the back if you want to be bumpy uh, one of my mixed media journal cards here. You like the cute? It's simple folio. And then this is an altered paper clip that has some, looks like maybe some Tim Holtz types cards behind there. And then this one I made by just collaging a book page, one of Norella's uh, faux postages, and the little butterfly it is a rubber stamp. It's kind of fun to go back to see what I did two years ago. This is a mixed media card I made and just stuck in here. Another one of these. Using scrapbook cardstock, gel prints, mixed media papers. It's just a little bookmark. And here it looks kind of like a playing card. It's a number five. Uh, scraps of paper and stamping in the background and a little bit of fabric with some bling. Another little collaged card. I haven't done a lot of these recently, so I'm trying to do more of that. And another altered paper clip. This time it has a pocket at the top. And then these are just some tear off note papers. Another one of these flip out folios. Again, I, it's just something simple, and you can use up that scrapbook paper. You know, I just try to coordinate some of them. Some of them I did. Uh, just colors that I thought would go well. This is a gift card holder. And then this can be a pocket or you could use it as a journal card, but I think it's supposed to be a pocket. So I'll put that in there. And that was back in December of 2020 when I made this one. It's very eclectic. It's got lots of good stuff in it. So I'm going to pick a winner here in just a moment. If you donated you want a chance to win please hop in there um do you like the journal cards i made today i thought those were fun it was kind of fun to do such a big format on here <sighs> robin won some junk bugs Woohoo! all righty well i'm gonna get off here about almost two hours that we spent some time here playing around. I hope you like this. Um, I may sporadically do some more Thursdays. It kind of depends on how I feel and what I have as far as what's going on with life. <laughs> but do look at for some more tutorials coming and come back on Monday at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time to watch me live. All right, we're going to pick the winner here in just a moment. You love those? Thank you, Nadine. 
It was fun seeing me gel print. Yay! I'm glad. I had fun. You adore the journal, Debbie. Thank you. Yeah, get it out, Gigi, and have fun. Thank you, Janice. Thank you so much, Teresa. Mm. I think they turned out pretty cool. I like this technique of making that kind of faux burlap texture in the background. Alrighty, let's, I'm giving you a couple more seconds. Love the larger side journal cards. Okay, cool. Because they can definitely go in a belly band or in a page, you know, two pages glued together and made a pocket down the middle. You could also uh, slip it over the edge of a page if you want. Alrighty. So let's pick the winners. Let me see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So these people have already entered Gigi, Robin, Rhonda, Nadine, Sandra, Janice, and Sandra. Because Sandra donated two different accounts. Debbie, Robin, Gigi, Nadine, Rhonda, Janice, Tori, Eric, Robin, Janice, and Sandra. So I think we're missing Tori and Eric to enter the raffle. Ah, okay, perfect. Okay, so Sandra, which one? Is it the Sandra Lewis or the Sandra L? <laughs> All right, you love the cards? All right, Debbie's in. Okay. I think Gigi's in, Robin. Okay. Tori had to leave. Nadine is in. Eric. Okay. Eric, enter the enter the graphic, Eric. I couldn't remember if Eric had to leave. Okay, gotcha. Sandra Lewis. All right. Gotcha. Sandra Lewis entered for Tory Bat. Okay. <laughs> Eric's in. All right, I think everybody's in now. Woohoo! Let's pick a winner of the journal. Sandra Lewis, which would be for Tori Bat. Congratulations, Tori. Tori won. Yay. Okay, cool. I believe I have her address, so we'll get that. Yay. She's been winning a long time. Good job. Good job. Alrighty, well, let's see. I'm going to get off here and eat a snack because I didn't eat lunch. That's the bad thing about doing it at 1230. <laughs> That's lunchtime. <laughs> and I skip a lot of times. <laughs> uh, again, be on the lookout for my tutorials that I'll be sharing. Check out the blog as well as the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. You can sign up for my newsletter. I'll be sharing the link here in just a little bit. I'll go on my other computer and post the link to the newsletter in case you don't get it in your email. Do check your spam folder. Look for Linda Israel when you do a search and make sure that you trust my email. It should be coming from mail. Chimp. All right, everybody. Yay. All right, everybody. I hope you have an amazing week. Uh, Robin says it's nap time for her. <laughs> I'll probably go for a walk. <laughs> Take Hercules is kind of chilly out today, though. You're very, very, very welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for supporting me live and hanging out with me and encouraging me. And I hope you enjoyed the projects that we did today with gel printing. All right, everybody. Yay. I'm so glad you really enjoyed the class, Rhonda. Yay. I'm glad. I'm glad you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Well, I'm going to get off here. Y'all have an amazing rest of your day, an amazing week. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Lots of love to you, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. And...
I hit the end button, but it wasn't going. 